Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Forgecraft Evolved. I'm Axon Evolved, and last time we got our our setup here a little bit more fleshed out. We hooked up some machines that would automate the crafting of basic missiles for us, and we didn't have everything quite hooked up yet because you know we're still we're still trying to work out getting everything hooked up. But today, I think I want to try to finish this machine off. I'll I'll start hooking everything up. We'll start making the basic missiles. It should make a couple because we've got, I, I put in some seed gold to kind of get the system flowing. So it'll run for a little bit and make us some basic missiles, but not a whole lot. But I want to add on at least, I think I want to add on the imbuers, right? Because we're going to need to set up our fuelers here, which take the fuel and the empty missiles into basic missiles. And then the imbuers to create the actual imbued missiles. So I want to get that set up today. The other thing I want to get done is I want to route this kind of overflow or catch across these lines somehow. Maybe I'll cut it back over here. I don't know. Get it, essentially get it over to our crafting and smelting area over there. So all the extra, you know, we're getting tin. What do we got in there? We got tin and lithium. Just get that extra stuff over to where it can get smelted so that it's just out of the way, you know. So I think we're gonna go hop into that. Let's check out how this quarry's doing. So the quarry's been doing some work. It's getting down there pretty quick. It looks like it's just going through a lot of basic material. So nothing too hard for it to go through. It, it takes a little bit longer once it starts getting into an ore patch, but looks like it's not in one yet. And you can see, I mean, it's flowing. I am noticing we're still getting kind of a throughput. Like these macerators just don't really go as fast as they they can so i might actually do a double line of macerators just to you know just like put a second one right on top of this and uh put another um three hoppers so that i can get double the maceration and then ha again you know output just just go one up higher because it looks like we can feed it fast like these three lines are plenty to feed it but this many macerators don't go fast enough to actually get it um to, to process the, the rock fast enough. You can see we just got a nice little uh, iron import too. So this is this is a great example of what I'm hoping for, right? So this should all go right over here to the iron smelting line as it should, right? So that's doing its job. And then from there, as you guys kind of saw last couple episodes, it's gonna go right over here once it's into a bar and feed into our composite fuel factory. So this is kind of, the hope of what I want to do, you know, personified, right? It's, it's, it's automating the missiles using just random stuff. So like there's our iron bars. Perfect. Okay. So I think the first thing I want to do is I want to double this up and get, get this stuff going. Cause you can see we have a backup here. We got backups here. I took out all of the, um, whoop, going up high. You can see here I took out all the filters to take out any of the, the coal and all that stuff. So if anything, if any coal comes up, it's just going to go. Um, if any biomass comes up, it's also going to go. I don't really use biomass for anything other than plastic pellets as of right now. Uh, normally you would use it for fuel, but I find the resin's just a lot easier to, to constantly farm, you know, like kind of set and forget. Whereas the, uh, the biomass, you got to constantly kind of, move around and look for the um like new deposits and stuff like that but actually something i didn't consider until right now as i'm talking we might actually end up hitting a crystal vein too and i don't know if crystal ore counts as smeltable or not so i don't know if it if it would go out that way so that might be something that we test in the future like what are you you know like i don't i don't know what that is oh it's a plant so I guess that's just going to go into the uh, the macerators, I assume. Yeah, I mean, it's making it over there. I'm interested to see it go out. Will it macerate? Yep, I guess it will. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to get all the stuff to double this up, and then I'll meet you guys back here once I get this kicked off. All right, so here you can kind of see the gist of what I'm doing. So I'm just doubling up these hoppers. These bottom ones are set to share, so it'll automatically share with the upper hopper. And then all I have to do from there is just attach the belts right above and it'll feed this top layer of macerators. 
So the exact same thing, just mirrored down a level. And they'll output to these hoppers, and these hoppers will uh, output down onto these belts, which all tie back in. So any only uh, smeltable ore is going to come out of here. But this should clear up our throughput issue, because uh, if anything, we would need to double up back here. Or another option is switch these to pipes. That's, that's always another option. Pipes are a little bit faster. So if we find that this is constantly not working fast enough, then we always have the option of switching to pipes. But I think, I think these go slow enough that it would take a little bit for them to act. Like, like I think this throughput is enough to handle how slow these macerators go. So now that that's all figured out and we got that going, look, we're getting, looks like we're getting more copper, more iron. Copper is the one thing that I don't really, you know, it's whatever. I, I didn't put anything in these ones. Still basic drill motor, basic cutter head because this is so much copper that like it, it's, it's almost like useless. It's useless to try to make this efficient because there's way more than we can actually use. So the other thing is I don't want this copper to back up as far as it is. I mean, it's already got only 200 bars of space left or is that used or oh, okay so yeah I, I guess i grabbed some copper out of here so so next thing up i'm going to hook up the fuel and the fuelers and kind of get some basic missiles crafting and so for the fuelers we're going to do the same thing i think i'm just going to do something like that and then i'm going to throw down the small hoppers because we don't need a lot right the the zipper merges are going to make it so that we have the perfect ratio so we don't need that many. We don't have to worry about it getting overwhelmed with one resource. But I think these need power. Yeah, they do need power. Okay, so these these do need power. Yes. Wait, do they? How did it make these if I didn't have power to it? I'm not sure. But power is easy enough to, to route. So we just need to find a source where we are generating more than we need and i think we have a source right here although it does look like it's pretty stable like i think this is actually too high of a of a power transfer i think i'm gonna drop this down to something that draws a lot less power because that's gonna um let me see if i reset it how much is it actually sending it's sending like nothing well we can use this route power along the ceiling and use that to power everything except the imbuers. Imbuers take way more power. You know, I think they take like 256 or something on their own. So, or, or 512, something, something kind of crazy. So we're going to need to um, get, have a dedicated power source for the imbuers. But for this, these machines and these machines, they take like eight power per second. That's, that is like a, a negligible amount of power. So we're just going to route our power up to the ceiling here and I'm gonna use this just to figure out like where I need to go and I'm gonna put some glass down I guess all right so we got power going and now we just need to route it we need to make sure it's kind of in line with wherever we're gonna need it and this is gonna be a little interesting because we need it kind of split three three different lines so I think I'm going to do something like that, right? I'm going to do this. And mm, what I don't like is everything's... Oh, spider bro, can I can I help you? Why, why are you here? Just getting all up in the way. Anyways, what I don't like is that these are only one apart. So if I throw additional batteries down and do this, it's like, it's very inefficient, you know? I might, honestly, I might be better served just doing something like that, purely to, I mean, that's not super efficient either, but at least this way I can route the power uh, farther down the lines without worrying too, too much. So we're gonna go ahead and run these lines. All right, so we had to do some funky kind of routing, but the general gist of it is um, the, the missile assemblers or the empty missile assemblers are powered by these, this first line. And then I kind of had to offset a little bit and move some of the the crafters around over here, the missile fuelers, to, to offset them a little bit so it's not quite in line, but it, it, it works out just fine. Um, 
everything will get power. So now all I need to do is kind of route these and hook all the all the lines up and get some basic missiles crafting. But then I also need a place for these to output. So I'm gonna hook everything up, make a dedicated output for it, and I'll bring you guys back. I just want to bring you guys back so you can see that everything is running. It, they're they're making. I don't have outputs for it yet. I'm kind of trying to figure out how I'm gonna do that, but everything's going into where it needs to go everything's you know like perfectly perfectly balanced as it's supposed to be and this doesn't have any hoppers to output in yet so it's not actually doing anything but you know we got not a lot of fuel that's kind of the the bottleneck here right is the the gold and the and the iron really like there's some iron that's getting out looks like oh man looks like we hit a lithium vein so i'm gonna need to i'm gonna need to work on this asap but i wanted you guys to see this you know we're making missiles as soon as we have somewhere to output but for the time being i need to get this excess ore out of here so uh, i think i'm just going to run it over the belts and out that way and kind of give this some space to kind of relax so i think it's gonna be something as simple as you know just doing that and then just running over here and i think i'm going to use the the conveyor the 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 step ups to get over everything just r rather than logistics scrum it's because i'm not super concerned with the looks of this i'm more concerned of the functionality so you know something like that have them meet that should be fine and you can see we've had at least one titanium so that's kind of nice it looks like we're in a lithium vein though which is kind of nice because there is stuff that we could use the lithium for. Like we could establish Spider Bro again and get his uh, the the charged lithium coils going and actually like feeding him constantly so that he becomes more of an asset and less of a thing that makes the camera shots kind of messed up. So I'm gonna route these kind of over that general direction and I'll bring you guys back and we'll kind of figure out what I'm gonna do with that together. Yeah, you guys can see this lithium vein that we hit really like backed up the system so getting all this stuff out of the way is actually a huge necessity because it clogs if it clogs up the whole system the whole system is 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 done you know so the line just kind of goes all the way down over here cuts through this rock over here and ends up back in this area here so it's eventually going to come down here and once we're back towards the smelting area it's now we got to really figure out like, okay, where am I going to attach this stuff? So we have iron here. We have a lithium in here, right? So what I'm thinking, iron and copper, we're not worried about because we're using those over there. But lithium and tin, this is tin, right? Yeah. So lithium and tin, we are going to use. In fact, I need to pick up some of this stuff so I can get the, uh, the ore so I can make the uh the filters right so let me do that for this too because i want to be able to filter out all the stuff i need and then attach it to where we need it to go but you can see a lot of this stuff's not moving because we're not using it copper and tin i guess we're using but iron and lithium so i might actually you know i might think about kind of rerouting one of these lines like maybe take one of these lines these iron lines are running it back over to this area to kind of supplement the missile production. In fact, I think that's exactly what I'm going to do because I want this to be running all the time. And if we're not, I, I think the only thing we use this for right now is like iron gears. So maybe I can do something like this, you know, and just kind of run it out this way and then kind of run it that way. You know what, I think I'm going to run this and try to incorporate it into the iron line over here. To the point where I'm even having it smelt. And that'll kind of make this whole iron line move. But most of the stuff's still going into there for anything big that we need. So let me go, I think I'm going to hook this up first. And then we'll worry about filtering out the stuff we need here to get onto the lines. Like This stuff hasn't even made it over here. All right, so now we have at least some use for this iron line. And because I think these all share, they're all set to share. So all the extra capacity that's not being used 
is going to all get into this hopper eventually and run down this line. And this line is very simple. It's just literally a straight shot all the way to... It kind of hops over the copper line right there and just ties right into the iron iron line here. So there's plenty of room for this to back up, meaning um, this is, I guess this is the only real limitation right here, but if I, I can always swap these hoppers out for something bigger if I needed to. But once the iron ore gets here, it'll just supplement right into the, uh, the line over here, which this is the biggest issue as far, this is the bottleneck for fuel creation. So we essentially have 50% of the basic missile creation accounted for. The fuel canister creation will be accounted for. Now the only real issue, the only bottleneck of this whole system is going to be gold. Because I don't know when the gold is going to make it to us. So, but as you can see, nothing's working because we clearly hit that lithium vein. So let me go. Do I have the lithium in my inventory? Because I need lithium to... I need the ore to set the filters and I don't, do I, am I, am I blind? Oh yeah, I have some right here. Okay, perfect. So lithium, I know there's a titanium over there and I think the other one is tin, right? So let me go, I'm gonna go set these filters over here or set up some filters so that we can kind of figure out what we're doing with this stuff. All right, so the first thing I wanna, wanna hook up is this tin. So what I'm gonna do Actually, I don't, I think I'll just have, well, no, I'm lying. Tin I, will not be the last one because titanium and nickel are going to need to make their way to connect to these lines somehow. In fact, I need a nickel ore. So what I'm going to do is I have enough, I have enough lines here for this uh, tin that I just have this line go into the, the leftmost and my tin from over here is going to go into the right lane. So eventually that's gonna come down. I'm going to plop that there. So this actually needs to go here. Ooh, there we go. And then I need the tin ore actually on, let's see, tin, we'll do lithium, and we'll do uh, these two, nickel and titanium. Okay, so this one, so I want this one to be, set it to 10, right? So Q to set it to 10, Q to set this one to 10, and then T to set it to everything except 10. That way, all the 10 will go, we'll hit this, 10 will go that way, what's left will go that way. But before we get there, I need to hop into the lithium. And I think the only way that I'm gonna be able to do that is doing something like this, right? So. Well, actually, no, I can do this. Look, I can I can have a belt right here, right? A, a down belt. I can use the regular belts to kind of come off of it, even to the point of, if I do this, I can have an up belt, go like that, and then, uh, do I need to go up one more? Yeah, I'll need to do something like this, right? So to go up like that, and then another up belt right here, but then that should, those should hook up, right? I just connect that, don't know why it did that. Okay, this should end up hitting, but then we're gonna run into the issue of not having enough space. So for the, for the meantime, because there's gonna be so much I'm gonna set up a small little buffer. And to do that, I think I'm gonna use, do I have any 2000 slot hoppers? That's the question. I don't think I do. Let me build some real quick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw a 2000 slot hopper right there. This is gonna essentially just take all of the lithium that we're, we're excavating right now and kind of store it until we're ready for it because we don't have we, we, need a, we need a use for it, right? We need a project that's gonna be using it constantly and we don't have it yet. So we need to get it out of the way so it doesn't clog up the system. But in order to do that, we need to get a project going and in order to get the project going, we need to um, have a use for it, right? So one thing 
first things first, you know, one thing before the next, we're just going to have what we need go that way. Okay. So we'll store it and then we'll hook it up, right? And then I can also deposit this lithium. Boom. So now that's set to lithium, we're good to go. Uh, the tin one, I'm going to just put some tin in there and that's good to go. So now once I grab this conveyor belt, right? Cause it's going to go like that. What are you? You shouldn't be here. Right? Your lithium. Okay. Yeah, sometimes little ones get through the system, right? So, but you can see that's already starting to fill up. Okay, perfect. So now we'll hook this up and all the lithium and all the tin should be accounted for. So you see lithium going right, tin going left, which is as it should be. And then I can do the same thing here where I throw a buffer down because the last thing I want is for these to kind of back up, you know, because this, this capacity is already kind of doing the same thing, right? There's not a lot of, not a lot of throughput in the tin because we're not super auto crafting a ton of stuff. So next we need to get all the tier two stuff back to where that crafts. So one of the options is going this way, right? Just kind of hooking up to a line, kind of sneaking over wherever I need to and hooking into the lines over here. Uh, maybe come around with the, come around with the titanium, the nickels right there. I don't want to, I, I don't want to be hooking into these hoppers. I don't want to be running by them because I don't want it to pull from the hoppers because that kind of defeats the purpose. So maybe I'll have the nickel. Oh man. Maybe I'll have the nickel come up and above. I could have the nickel run over the this tin right here. You know, just kind of maybe run right next to it. Nickel, run here, and then cut left. I don't, I mean, aesthetically, I don't like it being right in the middle of this kind of like pathway that I've created to get in and out. So I guess another option is if I try to enter it from here, but I'd have to go up high enough that I'm not messing with any of these hoppers, right? So I kind of have to run it like up above all the hoppers here and then do, you know, something like this, which I think now that I'm like playing with it, I think this is what I am going to end up with. I think I'm going to end up doing something like that. Um, you know, we'll do this and then we'll have a down, right? So we get off that elevation and then it's just a real simple kind of, you know, get rid of, like, like attach it into this belt here, right? So I'll put a big hopper. We'll kind of do something like that. Um, I think I can even do like that, right? Boom, boom, like that's hooked up. And then we'll just do this real simple, like up and down, you know, up, down. And, you know, honestly, I've been kind of feeling the up and down conveyors more than doing logistics grommets. I know there's like not much of a difference, but it just, I don't know, it's been working for me. It's, I, I like the way that it, it kind of has been working and looking. So, okay, so we need to set this one to, this one will be nickel. So Q to set this to nickel, Q to set it to nickel, and then T to make it everything except nickel. So we've got that going. Um, I don't think we're going to be seeing anything down this way for a while. But what I could do, because I have a nickel ore on me, I can throw that in there. Right? T to store one nickel. I can even store the tin. And the nickel should go there and eventually hit that hopper. So then for the titanium, we're just going to go all the way. We're going to cut right here. And I'm just going to have it literally, like I can kind of move some of this. I'm going to just have it kind of integrate in right there. So we will throw the hopper down, the big buffer, and then we'll kind of just run the the pipes as we need to, or the conveyors, I should say, all right? All right, so I'm, let me get this hooked up real quick. 
All right, and just like that, we got everything hooked up to at least account for the overflow, right? So again, this is the titanium line. That filter, the series of filters, it gets rid of lithium, tin, nickel, and then the only thing that would be left that hasn't been caught farther down the line is titanium, and that just goes, there's no need for more filters, it just does its thing, it connects right in over there. So with that being done, we've kind of officially hooked up the overflow for all the other stuff. So if we go back over here, we should see like this conveyor lines flow in, stuff should be macerating here at some point. Oh, actually it's not macerating because it's not even getting the chance to macerate because we're still trying to get it out. So I think the next thing to do would be to kind of get these into, I could either double them up. Hmm. Yeah, I could either double up these lines or switch to pipes. But you can see now that the, the iron situation has really increased the amount of fuel that we're producing. And what's nice, let me look at that, 110 backed up. But what's also nice, we're getting through this this uh, refined liquid resin supply, right? How much do we have here? So that's still 2,000. So we're easily keeping up with how much we're doing because we're also not creating a lot of missiles just yet. So I think the next thing to do is to get this thing hooked up to make imbued missiles. And then from there, I think that'll be it for the, the episode. So let's figure out how we're gonna get that done. All right, so here's our imbuers, right? So these take 512 power per second, which is just kind of a ridiculous amount. Essentially, there's no way we could power this with solar. There's just there's just not enough. Even the, the Mark II organics, I think they do like five, well, do they do five or do they do four? These are regular. I think I have organics over here. What are you doing? 540, okay, so I take that back. We could hypothetically make a series of Mark II solar panels just for one imbuer. The question is, is that actually worth it, right? Because we'd have just as much, um, we'd have just as much production or generation if we used, what, four generators, right? Now, on the subject of generators, I don't have a coal line very close. I think the closest is over there. So I could hypothetically run some generators. Let me think here. I could fit five of these. So l let's do some math real quick, right? So we have, if we wanted to do five imbuers times 512, that's like 3060 power per second. Now the question is, can we generate that much power without having a ridiculous amount of space taken up? And our our generators do what is that? 128 I think with the the coal. So, one thing I'm thinking is I put down an induction plate, you know, I put down one of these and I kind of do this something similar, only I would have to have, let's see, four per, right? So I need 20 of these somehow, because I need four per imbuer. And I can do at most, what, five, 10, 15. Well, I, I could do 20. So essentially I would need an induction plate and the whole thing surrounded by generators. The question becomes then, is that worth it? Is that enough? Is that is that going crazy? Or should I figure out how to I could put turbines down. I guess that's the other the other option, right? I could maybe maybe fit in a couple turbines like somewhere in this general area and beam the power to what? An induction plate? that's holding these or, you know, like put, put a Mark IV battery or maybe dig down 
and beam power under to a Mark IV battery that has an induction plate on top of it that these are sitting on. Um, you know, the more I'm thinking about this, the more I'm thinking, I mean, that might be okay because we could just siphon off this exact same fuel supply, right? Or even this fuel supply. We can siphon fuel off of this, right? And like right here, we can do another priority splitter and then use that to feed a series of generators over here of turbines, I should say, maybe what, two? If I do two turbines, I could conceivably get what? Six, six imbuers, which would be two imbuers per line. I think that's not bad, but then, so then, right, the, the, the thing is, we wanna make sure that the exhaust is going in a way where we're going somewhere where we're not really gonna be. And so I get, I guess, I mean, I never really go over here, so I could put the, the turbines like right in this area, have the fuel go back into like the closed system where the, the empties go there and we draw the, the fuel from from this line as opposed to our missile line because our missile line is kind of its own thing now right um but then the the it comes down to like what am i going to beam that power to i i guess it'd have to be a mark IV battery which means either i'm raising this up so that it's kind of like this weird little plateau above everything or i'm no i, th I think that's the only real way right or I'm, I'm building a induction plate in, in the ground, you know, five by five right here. And then I'm beaming the power under into a Mark IV battery that's below this, which means I need to go down there and dig out a line. The more I'm thinking about it, the more I like that idea. I think, you know, we dig it out here. We do the three by three. Okay, looks like we have some of this open. Where is it? You know what? This might be perfect, actually. We put an induction plate right here. We put a Mark IV battery right there. We run laser energy transmitters. You know, we clear this out, figure out where they're gonna be, run them to a Mark IV battery here, and use that to imbue everything. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we just figured it out. So I'm gonna get all the material together. I'm gonna build up everything, and I'm gonna at least get it mocked up so we can see how it would kind of look. The only thing is, this is gonna be for six, six of these. So I need to figure out how is that really going to fit on this five by five. So let me get all the stuff for that and then I'll get it mocked up and then I'll bring you guys back. All right, so we got the first layer of the Mark IV battery down. So let's throw this induction charger in and boom. Okay, so here's where everything's going to be right and i chose this location because it's a fairly straight shot to a clear area over there i don't know where the power for like that extra generator that's down there i don't know where that lines up because we are going to need let me think here i'm going to need if i'm producing 3600 power per second and i want to laser energy transmit then I'm gonna need, what, I can get 600 per second, right, with organic lens 640, okay. So that'd be six lens, so I need at least a face that is, I, I need a three by two face available to me, right? So let me finish this off. Okay, so I need to be able to hit this with six transmitters that all have uh, lenses on them which means I need to be in line with the middle of this plate right okay so that is let's fill that back in that's this line right here so I I need to power a battery that is at least somewhere in this area right somewhere in this spot and how is this looking down here? It looks like it's dug out. Perfect. Right behind a death battery. Even better. Okay. However, if we look, right? Let's, let's see if I can cross this without dying. Okay. 
So we need this area right here, these three blocks to go. So let me move this out of the way. Because this project seems like it's based on where the batteries need to go instead of where the turbines need to go. Because the turbines, we can make fit the batteries. Okay, so it'll be something like this, right? And I want to do this before I get killed by those spooling up. So, okay. So this should be enough, right? That's six lenses, six laser energy transmitters with the organic lenses on them. Okay, so I'm gonna finish off this battery. Okay, so we got the battery down. Now we need to dig out a spot, right? And this, this right here is kind of screwing me. Um, let me think here. So the, the turbines are three by four, right? And I have as much space as this above ground. So if I do a turbine right here, there's one. I'm going to have to make the other one right on top of it. Normally that's not a big deal. However, the issue it now is where am I going to put? I'd have to do two sets of fuel input and removal as opposed to just one. Now, I guess another option is I could just have this hit a hopper right here and just route it farther back. Because I only, if I can go over one more, if I had this space right here, then I have enough space to put one turbine hitting here, one turbine hitting here, and have the, the fuel input and output right in the middle. So I think what I'm going to have to do is modify this to kind of take take some some belts to get back over there something so something like this right which is not a huge deal it's just not as like good looking right all right so we finally got our turbines in place and i think the way that i'm going to go ahead and route this is we're getting the fuel from over there, right? So I think I'm gonna have the intake for the fuel come in here. So the fuel will come in here, the empties will just kind of go straight back out and hook right up into this line. So that way, I mean, it's literally already there. So there's we, nothing logistically that we need to do. Literally just throw on a little up belt there, get the old connection, you know, something like that, something like that, and boom empties taken care of now we need to figure out some way to siphon the fuel off so that everything down below doesn't suffer right so i'm tempted to use a priority splitter again we already have one so right so this prioritizes the the resin farm system but you know what i think i might be able to even just like siphon off of this in fact, that's I think that's what I'm going to do. I don't know if it's reckless. Probably is. But we're already here. And I, I'm just, I, I just want to get this up and going. So I'm just going to siphon fuel from this hopper and run it over to our generators. All right. And just like that, we have the fuel flowing. These things should kick on at any minute. There they go. We can see the status of the battery and we see that our empties are hooking back up which is which is good because i feel like we're producing way more fuel than we're actually using you know we'll see it start to pop out i hope yeah i think i thought we had a little a little backup in here but i guess not are we are we low on empties is that really the issue like we just don't have enough empties in here um well i'll do let me think here. I don't want to pull out 500. Um, I wonder if there's a way that I can just take out some. No, it doesn't look like it. Uh, here, I can just do this. I'm gonna I'm gonna jumpstart that little system over there so that it has more empties in the in the lines. 
All right, so we're just gonna get, throw 100 empties in here and that should at least get this jump started a little bit. Like I said, once we diverted this, uh, these empties, right? A lot of the empties that were in the system got diverted. In fact, I'm just gonna take all of that and throw it into here. We take all these empties because this has a way of replenishing, this doesn't. So once this system is, is filled with empties, then the loop becomes closed and self-sustaining and we don't have to worry about it. Because if we check on our resin farm, I haven't actually been in here in a while. If we look in here, it, it's doing fine. We have resin flowing for days, all the resin we could need, and it, it just it just does its thing, you know? We, we don't ever have to worry about it. So that's fine. And now let's see, is this getting powered? It looks like it's getting powered. How is it doing down here? That is already full. So that's working out beautifully. And so let's, I need to make a couple more of these, right? We said six, that's what we're going with. So let's see if we can get six actually going. All right, now, so with six of these, I need to figure out where is this all gonna go? So we got a couple options, right? We have, we can have them all kind of be fed from sets of two, right? Maybe I can even have it do something like that. Kind of like take that away. Put one right there, right one right there, and then one right here, right? And then all I need to do is have a remove only in between them. And then just hook these up with the basic missiles and then they can all oh but then i need a bunch of add only ones okay let me try one more thing okay so i can do something like this right add only's here add only's here now these three outer ones will take in the basic missiles we're making right here these four inner ones will be the completely imbued missiles, right? So we have to do something like this. We'd have to come up top, I think. And then, because that means this line would grab from both. And then we can do something like step down right here. Right, and then we could add in these hoppers like that to get, what, 6,000 missiles, right? So if I am going to, let's just say, I have a bunch of missiles in my inventory, right? So I'm gonna run a little test to see how well this system performs before I hook it up to the, to the big one. All right, so I'm gonna throw in all the missiles I have in my inventory, all 350, and let's kinda just see how that works. And we can also see the time, right? So it looks like it was, I don't know, 12-ish seconds. Let's see what it looks like after it finishes one. Okay, so about 15 seconds per missile, which means we're getting, what? So that's six every 15 seconds. So 24 missiles per minute, 24 imbued per minute. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Is it? Yeah, that's really not bad. And then the other thing we can do, right? So this is analogous to just hooking up, you know, this line goes here, this line comes from there, this line feeds into there, and then all three sides are kind of getting their own missile supply. So that would definitely work for all of this. And yeah, with that, I, I'm not gonna quite hook it up just yet because I wanna see how this runs, but I think that's a functioning missile, like imbued missile system, right? We, you know, we're, we're generating the power for the viewer there we hooked up our overflow line to get all the extra material hopefully out of the system but it looks like it's still backing up so we're going to need to figure out a use for all of this lithium right now uh, our fuel system's automated we, we hooked up that supplemental iron line to make sure that the the fuel crafters are, are working and honestly i'm debating hooking up a supplemental gold line similar to how we did this because our gold isn't getting used right now 
and I think it'd be worth it to route another one over here. But I think that's all going to have to wait until the next episode, ladies and gentlemen. So next time I want to, I want to check out how we're going to route this. I want to get a use for this lithium and I want to hook up a gold so that this system, once I hook everything up, is completely automated and we don't have to think about anything. So with that, guys, thank you so much for sticking around. Um, if you liked the video, hit that thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to me on Twitch, check down below I'll, or following me on Twitch. I'll put my, my link in the description because I want to do some of this stuff on stream so I can get you know real-time feedbacks for this or that. So check down below. Uh, check my Twitter too. I'll also be putting, I don't, I don't have a stream schedule yet, but when I do have anything updated, I'll put it on there. So with that guys, thank you so much and we'll see you in the next one.